So this puzzle is from the second ever edition of Gas Leak, which is our monthly PDF that we release compiling all of the puzzles posted in Gas for that month. It's on our website at sudokutheory.com slash gas. And also including three to five bonus puzzles. Um, and where the bonus puzzles come from is generally they are puzzles that one or the other of us set during the course of the month and submitted to testing for gas. And we ended up deciding that they weren't suitable for the main gas series for one reason or another, generally because the puzzles are too difficult. There have been other reasons from time to time, but I'd say 90 plus percent of the time it's because the puzzle came out harder than intended. Uh, we've gotten more consistent as we've been doing this for a couple of years now. This is, however, from one of the very, very first gas leaks when we were still really working to get the difficulty consistently approachable and kind of settle on the overall feel and the overall difficulty level of the series. And so this is a puzzle that Philip submitted for testing that we ended up deciding was too tricky. And it has become somewhat infamous because I think it has a very interesting solve path. I think it's a really worthwhile puzzle and I think there's a lot of good stuff in it. But a lot of people did find the deductions to be very hard to see. And even now people are thinking about this one. I just got a request quite recently for a solve walkthrough of this puzzle, even though it was released several years ago in Gas Leak. Um, and so I think that that in itself, the fact that people are still curious about this one, it makes it a good candidate for the bonus walkthrough treatment. Um, I also am particularly fond of this puzzle. I think it's really an interesting construction. And I think that... It's something that um, even though it wouldn't have done well in the main series of gas, I'm glad that Philip made it and I'm glad that it ended up in Gas Leak where people could look at it and appreciate it kind of in a more relaxed way and, and kind of more slowly. So let's have a look. So this is an arrow Sudoku. Uh, we have standard Sudoku rules. So we're placing the digits one through nine once each in each row, each column, and each three by three outline region. And additionally, we have arrows in the grid, and some of these arrows overlap with each other, so we're going to have to be a little bit careful to keep everything organized. The rule with arrows is that digits along the arrow sum to whatever the digit is in the circle attached to that arrow. So for example, these two digits sum to whatever this value is. If we have multiple arrows coming out of a circle, which we do in several cases in this puzzle, um, the digits along each of those arrows individually sum to the value in the circle. So for instance, these two digits sum to this, and then these two digits also independently sum to this, these two digits independently sum to this, and so on. So let's get started. Let's start by placing some nines in the puzzle, because nine can never go along the line of an arrow because then whatever digit you put in the attached bulb would have to be greater than nine, which is not possible in Sudoku. So we have a given nine here, which rules nine out of these cells. These digits are all also on arrows, and so is this one. So we have to place a nine here. And note that even though this is an arrow bulb, it has an arrow line overlapping it. So that still can't be a nine. So that means that nine is here in column six, and nine can't go there or there, so it goes here. If we look to the right of that given nine, it rules nine out of these cells and the arrows being in these cells rules nine out of there. So nine is in one of those two cells. Now, if we combine these two things, the nine here rules nine out of these cells. The fact that there's already a nine in this column right here rules nine out of these cells and then the arrow lines rule nine out of these cells. So this here is a nine and that's gonna be our starting point. So now let's look down and to the left. So whatever this value is, it has to be the sum of these digits. And whatever this value is, it has to be the sum of these digits. And whatever this value is, it has to be the sum of these digits. And what drew my eye to this is that this is definitely the longest chain of connected arrows in this puzzle. So I assumed, luckily correctly, that this was going to end up giving me the restriction that would get me going on the puzzle. So this has to be a minimum of two because this could technically be two ones. So it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Um, however, it can't be nine because this digit has to be larger than it. In fact, it can't be eight because if it was eight, we'd put a one here and then a nine there. That would be the only way to fill out this zero. So this cannot be eight or nine. It also can't be four because there's a four in the region. 
Now, whatever this is has to be greater than this. So um, this has to be a minimum of three. So it's three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. Can't, and, or nine. Um, can't be eight or nine because there are eight and nine that see it there. And now because this can't be eight, this can no longer be seven. So that's now a maximum of six. Now we go upstream a little more. Whatever this is has to be bigger than this because this is part of the sum. So this is four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. This cannot be a nine because it's part of a nine arrow. And also there's a nine in its column now and in its region. And it also can't be seven because there's a seven there. Now we're going to focus on this cell specifically. So let's rule out some options. First of all, this can't be four. That's a relatively quick rule out because there's only one way to make four in two digits that see each other. And yet there are two different arrows in the same region coming out of this. So we'd have to make this one one and three, and we'd also have to make that one one and three, and that breaks that whole box. So it's definitely not a four. Now to see what else it can't be, this is kind of the tricky opening move to this puzzle. And I'm gonna do this with coloring. Let's go back to this cell for a moment. So whatever, um, well actually let's start up here. So this orange cell is the sum of these two, let's say blue cells. So orange is the sum of blue and blue. Now this blue digit is the sum of these. So if I wanted to, in this kind of math equation I'm setting up, I could, I could take this blue cell and I could replace it with these two because whatever these two sum to is the same as whatever this is. So now I have orange as the sum of these three. And now I could even go a step further and whatever this blue digit is, it's the sum of these two. So I could take this in the sum and I could replace it with these. And I still have a true equation. Orange equals blue plus blue plus blue plus blue because all I've been doing the whole time is replacing one blue cell with cells that I know sum to that same value. So I've been keeping the sum the same. So I still have orange equals blue. Now the minimum of these three blue cells is one plus two plus three, since they're all in the same row. So the minimum of just those three cells is six. But then I also have to add an additional cell. So the minimum of all four of these is six plus one or seven. Therefore, this cannot be five. It cannot be six. The only digit it can possibly be is eight. That makes this a one. And that gives us our starting point in this puzzle. So let me remove these blue cells, but not before I write in that these can only be as big as four because the absolute maximum we can make the sum of those three would be seven, one, two, and four. And then this can only be as big as two because if this is six or seven, this can only be one or two. Now, because I've placed the eight and that gave me a one from this nine arrow, that one is now in a really convenient place, right? So the one sees this one, two, making it a two. Now these three cells plus this cell, I probably shouldn't have uncolored those so quickly, right? But anyways, we can just remember those three cells plus that cell equal eight. Well, the minimum here is six, six plus two is eight. So we're gonna remove the fours and just say this is six and that's two and that sums to exactly eight. The other thing we get to do is we get to reduce this because this can no longer be a two since there is a two on its sum, that's now three, five, or six. And we get to increase this. Um, this has to be a one, two, or three, so this can only be five, six, or seven. Interestingly, we now have a one, two, three triple in the row. We can eliminate the three here, and then the remaining digits here can't be one, two, or three, can't be seven or eight, so they're four, five, six, and nine. Let's simplify that. So this can't be a four. We can't have nines on the arrows. This is on an eight arrow, so we can't have a four because we would have to also have a second four right there. So this must be five or six, and then that's two or three. This has to be um, some combination of one, two, three, five, six, seven. It's either one and seven, two and six, five and three. I'm not gonna pencil mark that just yet. I might pencil mark that in a minute. And what is the next move here? These can only be as big as six. Okay, I'm just going to pause for a moment to try to recall what the next move was because I was very worried about forgetting the break-in and of course I haven't forgotten the break-in, I have forgotten the next thing that we need to look at, so bear with me for just one moment.
So this, okay, here we go. So this is it. Um, so we now know that this digit is either one or two. So this is either one plus two or two plus two. Can't be two plus two because there's a four in the region. So it's one plus two and that's a three. That eliminates a one from here. So now we're pretty restricted on how we can make this five, six, or seven sum. We definitely can't use a six. Now these can't be ones. Therefore, this can no longer be a seven because one plus seven would be eight. So we're gonna eliminate seven there. And now this is at maximum six, which means we have to use a two because if we don't use a one or a two in that sum, the minimum we get is three plus four, which is actually seven. So we have to have a two and the two can only go there. So this is five, which is two plus three or six, which is two plus four. And those are our only options for that cell. And also we know that three has to go there in one of those positions. Now we've used both two and three here. So in order to make the sum of eight on this arrow, we're gonna make that a one and make that a seven because that's the only way you can make an eight and two cells without using a two or a three. And then these are going to be four, five, and six in some order. Now, what are we gonna do next? So let's take a look at, well, let's look at eights real quick. So eight can't go into these cells anymore and it also can't go here because in that case, this would have to be nine, which is broken. So eight's got to go there or there, and eight's got to go up here somewhere. Yeah, and now let's look at this chain up here on the right. Okay, so this and this sum to nine, and we can't use a four, so there are three ways we can do it. We can either have them be one and eight, which would have to go in that order, because one can't go in that bulb. Two and seven, which again would have to go in that order, because that two can't go in the bulb and three and six, because while technically three could go in a bulb, that would give us three plus one plus two, which would make this digit far too small to do a sum there. So this is one, two, or three, this is six, seven, or eight. Therefore, this is no greater than seven, and these are no greater than six. So this cannot be a one. Now, this sum is going to restrict this digit. These two cells have to sum to nine and they can't include a one and they can't include a seven. So we can't use one and eight and we can't use two and seven. We have to use three and six or four and five. Now this cell can't be a three, so that's not a three, that's not a six. And this cell can't be a four or a five, so that's a three and that's a six. And that's going to remove three and six as options here and six as an option here. Now we only have two, four, and five remaining. So this is going to be either two or four. But if this was a four, then that would have to be a five. So this is two and seven, and we can remove two from here. Now let's pencil in our remaining options here. So these are going to be four, six, and eight. This can't be a four, and it can't be an eight because it has to be part of a seven sum. So this is a six with a one. The six makes this a five and a three. The five has to be two plus three, and eight is three plus five. The five also gives us a four and a six. And now finally we get to wrap back around and get this digit. So that tells us this has to be bigger than five. And this is at maximum two because two plus five is seven. This has to be bigger than six. And this is at maximum two because two plus um, six is eight. This is also no longer three for a couple of reasons, including the three right there. Um, we could get this mathematically at this point. And actually I think that's what I'm going to do. This is a one, two pair. So to make this digit, we have to sum these two cells, which is the same thing as summing these three cells, because these two equal that. So summing these three gives us this. We know this is a one, two pair because they're in the same region. And that's a five, so they sum to one, two, and five. And I actually only just now noticed the invisible seven in the row, which would also have told us that this is eight. So I probably should have just gone for that first. But you know what? You got a cute Sudoku trick out of it. All right, by Sudoku, this is a two because we can't put a two in those cells. So that's a two and this is a five, nine pair. These are six, seven, and eight. This sums to nine. So this is either three, four, or five with the pencil mark down here, but there's a three in the row. So we know now that this is a four, five pair. Now, what else do we have here? This is a two, which goes with a seven. That makes this a six and resolves the one, two, because we know that six plus two is eight and six is five plus one. Now these digits have to be, I believe, two, three, and nine. This can't be a nine or a two, so that is a, th oh, no, not two, three, and nine. Um, two, three, eight, and nine. 
But my point stands, this can't be two, eight, or nine, so that's a three. That makes that a two, and we can eliminate two and three from those two cells. There's a nine in the row, so that's now an eight. And this is now a six. These are going to be four, five, and seven. This is not going to be a six. In this region, we still need three, four, five, and eight, and we can't place an eight there. We can't place a five up there. Now, how are we going to make a sum of eight down here now on this arrow? We can't go one and seven. We can't go two and six because one and two are already in the columns. That must be three and five. And that resolves these digits in the rest of the column. And it also tells us that this is a four because of the three, five pair. And that four is going to give us a bunch of stuff across the middle three boxes. So this isn't a four and it's also not a five again, thanks to the three, five pair. Now these are going to be four, six, and nine, which places a six here. We can resolve the three, five now. Um, this is a seven and a one, and we get those. Now finally, we need to make a sum of seven here without using a five or a six. So this has to be a three, four pair, which goes like that. And our remaining digits in this column are going to be one and seven. And our remaining digits here are two and eight. And we need to place a five and nine in this row, which give us this. And place a six and seven there, a one and eight there. And finally a two and a four, which will be resolved by this two A pair. And that's how you solve Philip's gas leak bonus two arrow Sudoku from July, 2021. Uh, go back and check that out. I'll include solve links in the video description. Uh, if you missed this, if you weren't hanging around with us yet, you should go back and try this puzzle and try some of the other older Gas Leak puzzles. Um, it's kind of the Wild West back then. All of us submitted a lot of really interesting stuff for Gas Leak. Uh, and some of it had like really compelling, interesting moves that are worth taking a look at, just like in this puzzle. So yeah, have a look and feel free to make requests if there are any other ones that you run into that you want to hear us talk about. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.